Hi, I am Ron Wilkie, your project management professional, your cybersecurity quarterback, and today we're talking about managing a, a penetration testing project. All right, so this is going to be a lot of fun for you. I'm sure you haven't done any type of project like this before, so that's why you're looking at this video. And hopefully I can bring something to the table and give you something to think about, give you some tools that you can use so that you can manage this project effectively. So let's look at the scenario. You are a project manager at a major corporation. Well, let's, say, let's not say major. Let's say mid-size. Let's say uh, 500 to 1,000 a, a employees. Because of the recent attacks on American corporations, your company has asked you to lead a project to determine the vulnerabilities to the company. All right, so you don't know the time, cost, or quality of the project at this time. But through the different um, techniques that I will give you in the next 10 minutes, hopefully not that long, you will be able to determine those things. You've never managed this type of project. Your company has never had a formal pen test completed, and everyone is looking to you for direction. Either that or they're looking to set you up. <laughs> One of the two, you choose. All right, but you don't have to worry about, worry about being set up because I'm giving you the tools and techniques that you will, will need in order to shine on this project. And that's what I want for you. I want you to shine, okay? So let's get to it. So let's like walk down the aisle of project management. Now I know you know this stuff, but this is our foundation. When you do your project, these are the things that you do. You initiate the project, you plan it, you execute, you monitor the project being done, and you close out when it's done. Now in the software development lifecycle aspect of it is plan, do, test, deploy. But as a project manager, this is what you're doing. Initiating, planning, execution, monitoring, and closing. But the most important part of this, especially as it relates to um, pen testing, is planning. Planning, planning, planning. And usually that's the most important part of any project, but definitely in penetration testing. And what, you may ask, what is penetration testing? All right, pen testing or penetration testing is basically when you are testing the security controls of your company to protect its assets or to protect the data or whatever you consider an asset to the, your company. So you, go, you are going to test the security of protecting that information or the assets that you deem critical, right? All right, so let's talk about asset requirements and scope. So one of the first things that you've been taught to do is to collect your requirements. And this is obviously after you identify your stakeholders. Um, you want to then say, okay, I want my project to do A, B, C, D, E, F, G, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? But I'm going to tell you something different. Why? Because I'm your cybersecurity quarterback. I've done this. I've hit all the potholes. I've seen where things go wrong. This is what you should do before that. You should determine your critical assets. Determine what is important to your company and then test the security to those things and make that part of your scope. Like, for instance, um, I have a video that you may have seen already and it's the access control, access management video in which we talk about access to certain assets. And based on the asset, not everyone should have access to those particular uh, assets. So if it's HR data, not every employee needs to have access to all of the HR data. Well, the same thing here. Um, you determine what's important so that you can use the appropriate security to protect that asset. And once you determine the most important assets and the security to those to that asset or those assets, you want to test the security. You want to test the controls to prevent anything happening to the confidentiality of that data, the integrity of that data, and the availability of that data. So I said a lot right there because it's very important. Determine your critical assets first. Now as it relates to collecting your requirements, um, I put a document here, OSSTMM3. It's very important 
that you uh, write this down and Google it later because anything, any question that you may have that I don't answer, well, first of all, if you send me a question, I'll make another video. If you like it and, you know, I'll finish this up and do more videos about this particular topic. But if there's anything else you need, it's in this document. And actually, uh, I can pull it up. This is the document. That's the cover page. And let me scroll down uh, to just show you some of the things that's in here. For instance, this talks about the test. This part talks about the scope, the test plan, the test process. Uh, you know, it has a lot of information in it, and it can help guide you through the whole penetration testing aspect. This part talks about reporting. So, again, that's really good information. That's free. I just gave that to you. You can pay me later. All right. Next, you need to determine what do you want to test. So um, when they gave you this assignment, they probably just said, we need to do a pen test. Well, do you test the entire company? Do you test, for instance, the employees' uh, security awareness um, by having flash drives with uh, uh, malware or viruses on it that will let your pen test team know who put in the uh, USB? Because that should be one of your policies or uh, standards or guidelines that employees just don't put up, um, pick up random USBs and put it in their work computers. Um, do you test um, the web applications um, to see if they are vulnerable to different types of cross-site scripting or uh, SQL injections? Do you want your pen test team to test your mobile apps that you created? Because believe it or not, most mobile apps are very vulnerable to attacks. Uh, do you want your pen test team to um, attack via your wireless access points, your Wi-Fi? You know, can somebody just drive around next to your building and log into your network and then have access to all of your data and files? So there are a lot of things that you need to determine um, as it relates to testing and what should be tested and what to test. And this will obviously lead to your scope. Now I have scope here, but I wouldn't necessarily do my scope in this uh, at this time. So I have determined your critical assets, then determining your requirements, and then scope. But actually, I like to leave the scope for last because if you don't, well, if you don't leave your scope for last, what usually ends up happening is that you want to add to the scope, add to it, add to it. And now you've added to the budget and you have scope creep and you have an issue with the project becoming so big because I'll tell you what exactly will happen. When a pen test team goes in and starts doing things, they're going to give you reports, at least they should, and you should have a communication plan. I didn't put that in here, but you should have a communication plan in which you're talking to your pen test team, and they're going to say, hey, I found this over here. Do you want us to test this as well? That's going to add to your scope. That's going to make it um, more costly because there is a cost involved, and that's probably, that's part of, you'll see in that document that I just showed you that you're not supposed to just hack for free <laughs> and just do things nilly willy. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to be professional and you're supposed to do things in a certain way in a professional with professional guidelines and standards. So I usually like to leave the scope for last. Um, and here I have signed off of the scope and I like to do that again last after you've done all of these next steps I'm about to show you. So why do I have risk management plan here? The reason why I have risk management is because when a pen test team goes in and they're doing what they're going to do, and it should be part of your requirements depending on what you want them to do, they can easily break something. And if things are not planned out properly, then something can be broken. So one thing you can do, you know, is that you can actually, instead of testing in production, maybe test in pre-prod or in development somewhere or give actual um, directions as to what IP addresses can be tested because your data is just way too sensitive over here to even uh, fathom that something could happen to it. So you want to identify your risk. See, I have that there, and this is not your project risk as it relates to if your project will work or not or succeed or the potential of it or the percentage of it being completed on time or in the green. Um, as we like to do in project management, green, yellow, red. Um, but this is more so the risk of what could happen if 
um, a pen tester breaks something by accident. So you want to qualify that risk as high, medium, and low, those risks, and you want to plan a risk response, just like you would have one if an actual attacker uh, did something to your data. All right, so that's very important. You want to start with that um, because you want to make sure you've identified your critical assets and the risks to them with doing this test. All right, so let's talk about those assets, the requirements, the risk, and the cost that go with it. Now, I have here social, social media. I talked about that a little bit, like dropping off USBs. Or what if you want us to test, not us, but what if you want your pen test team to test um, actually uh, being able to just walk through your building? Uh, will someone let me piggyback into your building uh, without a badge? Can I just go to the copy machine and pick up paper, walk by people's desk and pick up sensitive files? You know, um, that's social media. Or can I just call and ask for someone's password? Can I put on um, an, a uniform that looks like an electrical worker and get to your data, data room or your electrical grid room? your electrical power room or your battery room or your generator room. Um, so that's social media. Capture the flag. That's basically if you tell us that I have a file and this is the file and it's in my network somewhere, can you get to it? That's capture the flag. Uh, identify, you may want the company to identify your passwords or crack encryption, but I put all those things there. Sorry to get into uh, some of the weeds of that, but uh, depending on what you want done, it, it's going to take longer. The more you want done, the longer it's going to take, which is going to drive up the cost. So I don't really mention time right there, but I am now as it relates to the cost because the more things you want done, the longer it's going to take. So I have here determined the budget. Guess what? You really want to do that first because if not, you're going to have scope creep. Now, I went back and I told you that you want to identify your assets first. You really do want to do that at the beginning of the project. You really should actually have done that before this project, to be totally honest about it. You should have done that before this project. And now um, the first thing you should do for this project is identify your budget. Because if you have $100,000, that's going to determine what you do based on your, your priority. But if you don't, if you have an unlimited budget, you just might as well say do everything. All right, I only have like two minutes left. I'm sorry. I've been doing a lot of talking, but I hope you're getting something from this. So let's plan your quality. We talked about time. We talked about costs. Uh, let's talk about your quality. Your quality is based on the report that you get. No matter what tests I do, it doesn't matter if the report is whack. If your report does not tell you what's wrong, where it went wrong, and how to fix it, then the report is not good. Now, there should be two different types of reports, depending on the test that you do. Um, one report is for senior management. It's high level. It's basically, this is what we found. These are the categories. And then you may have a screenshot or a video file of the capture of what you actually did in real time. Or if it's a certain amount of packets lost, let's say the test was to, was to determine what you can sniff off of the network, then you might want to use Wireshark and show the packets that you were able to receive. And then how to fix it. That's the quality aspect of it. I have one minute left. You want to determine if you're going to do this internally or externally. The pros, cons, internally. You have a conflict of interest. If I was supposed to do the firewall and I'm testing the firewall and it's not right, the control isn't working, am I going to really report it? So that's the conflict of interest. And if you go external, it's going to be a higher cost and limited time frame based on your budget like we just talked about. So I'm Ron Wilkie, your cybersecurity quarterback. I hope you got something from it. And if there's anything I can do, let me know. And I appreciate you for watching this video. Thanks.